Welcome to this radio channel and um, I'll be posting a few videos about propagation because I see a lot of you know people talking about propagation and wondering why they hear this and that a certain time also why they hear this frequency and not the other one in the daytime or the nighttime I see a lot of people talking and uh, practically saying pretty much uh, you know all sorts of wrong things about propagation and uh, so these few videos that I'll post are to just put things straight so that everybody can understand especially if you're a, new, a newbie it's very important to understand these things because it will help you in your hobby so first of all the daytime nighttime pattern is the first thing that we'll check because if you've been listening for a while there is a big difference between nighttime daytime propagation and that is very well represented here the reason for that is because in the daytime the ionosphere which reflects the radio signals of shortwave a little bit like it's a mirror a giant mirror in the sky that reflects radio signals from 3 to 30 megahertz but in the daytime it's separated into three layers as you see here the D the E and the F layer now here it says D E F but in most books and in most uh, textbooks that you'll check it's D F1 and F2 uh, they rarely rarely use the E layer usually it's D F1 and F2 now the higher the frequency the higher the bounce in this um, shortwave signal so for example the D layer is going to um, you know be bouncing um, lower frequencies but the higher in the frequency say the 10 meter band you'll probably be bouncing in the F layer up here now one of the problems is that the D layer is a, a layer that absorbs a lot of signals below free certain frequencies so for example you might have noticed that you know three four five six seven megahertz there's not a lot to listen to except maybe very local stuff in the daytime that's because the D layer absorbs the signals for long distance propagation it's impossible and the higher the frequency you go the more you hear signals because these signals can actually go through the D layer and start using layers that are higher it's like the F1 or F2 layer so basically that's why high frequencies are mostly daytime or around sunset there's also nighttime propagation which basically the, the D F1 or F2 layers or D E and F as you see here will kind of all you know merge into one layer uh, and so because the D layer is gone um, basically lower signals now can go through and propagate on that high F layer like the high frequencies in the daytime and that's why you'll hear lots of signals from uh, on the 49 meter band 6 megahertz for example in the nighttime because they now can actually propagate through this layer so that's the general idea is daytime will be higher frequencies that you'll use because of this uh, these three layers basically nighttime will be the lower frequencies because the F layer is um, prop, you know there's no other layers to actually absorb the lower frequencies now you may say you might say well okay then why can't I hear you know 10 meter band at nighttime or you know high frequencies propagate if there's a F layer it's a F layer like this one here the F layer at nighttime is not as robust. It's not ionized as uh, much as the daytime F layer. Because what ionizes the layers is the sun's uh, rays. Basically, the sun outputs X rays and all sorts of energy at different frequencies. That's what uh, ionizes the ionosphere so in the nighttime the sun isn't there so the F layer is still there but it's much weaker than the one in the daytime so typically high frequencies like 10 meter band for example uh, will go through 
So if you transmit a signal at noon on 28 megahertz, it's going to bounce off the F layer and come back down somewhere. But if you transmit the same signal at midnight local time, then you'll, your 28 megahertz signal, the F layer can't support that. So it's just going to go through space and it's not going to come back. So that's the basics of the propagation here. Daytime, nighttime. So basically, as a rule, you can say that daytime you want to be 10 megahertz or up. And even better, 15 megahertz or up. Nighttime, you'll listen, 15 megahertz or down. And even in the winter time, often below 10 megahertz. Um, because there is an effect of winter and summer. And that we'll talk about it also. We'll talk about the solar activity. We'll talk about specific, uh, really weird uh, propagation things that can happen. You know, I told you 28 megahertz doesn't propagate at night on the F layer, but I'm sure some of you, like I do, sometimes hear 10, 10 uh, you know, meter signals, 28 megahertz signals at midnight. So what's happening? So there's, you know, little things that can happen in propagation. So basically, just remember this. Uh, remember that, of course, there's um, other effects here, but the basics of propagation is this. Um, and this is how the ionosphere is displayed, basically, daytime and nighttime. That's why the different frequencies. And if you have questions, by the way, on this little series that I'll output, um, ask away because uh, I think it's important for everybody to understand um, you know propagation of shortwave signals and they're gonna really help you understand how to make your hobby a better hobby because you'll know uh, all sorts of little tricks that I'm going to show you in this series of videos so this is the basics understanding why we have daytime and nighttime and that the frequencies that propagate aren't the same depending on where you are on daytime or nighttime. If you enjoy my series, hey, I hope you give us thumbs up, helps us in the ratings on YouTube. Why not subscribe to my channel? Uh, you know, I post tons of videos on shortwave radio, amateur radio, all sorts of things. We have live shows and, you know, it's a great little place to be, especially if you're a newbie on the shortwave and even amateur radio side of uh, things. And the you know, we're going to follow up with other videos, so check out, it's going to be a full series of propagation um, videos for shortwave. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy these videos.